Four tips to beat the drought. It's no secret. We're in the midst of one of the worst droughts in California history. The situation is bad. I looked at a map today and most of the map was red, meaning exceptional drought. It was, most of it was red. We're on red alert, people. This is all hands on deck. It's a bad situation, all right? But if we work together, we can figure it out. We can, we can come up with a solution. I'm gonna show you four tips that you can use, real easy tips that you can use in your garden to, uh, to handle the drought and live and make it through the drought, okay? All right, first tip, check it out. Um, this is the key to the first tip. And uh, you're probably wondering why I'm showing you a leaf. Well, this leaf is very, very valuable. This leaf, just like us, one person can, can make a difference. But if you have many leaves together, united, we can make a massive difference. This is mulch. Mulch is the key to this whole equation here. And it's probably the most important tip I'm gonna talk about today. If you don't have mulch in your garden, especially in drought prone areas, you're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna be out there with your hose watering constantly. So when you throw mulch on the ground, you're creating a whole ecosystem of awesomeness. And one of the most important things that mulch does is hold water and retain soil moisture and keep things happy, all right? I'm growing this avocado tree. I planted it this year. This is the gem avocado. If it wasn't for the heavy layer of mulch on the ground, this tree wouldn't even be here. This is a, avocado trees are a water thirsty tree. And look, I'm growing other water, high water requirement crops like bananas and I got citrus over there that likes water. There's a mango tree over there. Look, none of these trees would even be here if it wasn't for this, the mulch. All right, check it out. I'm gonna just throw, throw it on the ground and I'll show you guys how I put mulch around trees. Here's a big bucket full of uh, leaves. These are, by the way, these are white sapote, dead leaves. What is good mulch? Dead leaves are the best mulch. And then lawn clippings, and then you can also go to the big box stores and buy their bags of mulch, which is, would be my third option. But uh, if I had no other access to mulch, I would, I would probably do that. But, uh, but this, dead leaves from trees are awesome. And I'm gonna show you how I apply it, just like that. Put it on the ground and then spread it around. Thicker the better. The thicker layer of mulch, the better. I recently went to Riverside and I went to an a avocado orchard that was abandoned. They turned off the water and the, the trees were still doing great. They had fruit on them and everything. And I was like, how does this work with no water in Riverside where it's hot and desert-like conditions? And the moment I found out was when I walked up to one of the trees and I nearly fell in. I went knee deep down into the mulch. That is the power of mulch. It keeps the trees alive in the drought. So mulch, number one tip, it's very, very important. All, in fact, I'm going to do a video talking just about mulch. Coming up, subscribe, like, and subscribe. Okay, tip number two, check it out. I dug this hole. I was going to plant a tree in it. But look, look what I discovered. Roots, big roots from that tree right behind us. It's a huge tree. It's like 40 to 45 feet tall. And that tree's roots are all over the place in my lawn. When you plant a, when you plant a new tree, you wanna maximize the amount of water that you use. And you wanna maximize the amount of water that goes to your tree, the newly planted tree. These roots of this big tree will rob all the water. They'll just suck it all up and none of the water will go to your newly planted tree. So what I do is, uh, I just dig them up and I expose them to air and they slowly die. If you want to speed up their death, you could drill holes in them and pour salt in them and that will uh, accelerate their decline. Then you get them out of the way, then you can plant your tree and all the water will go to your tree instead of the roots. You'll save water. And this whole video is about saving water. You want to maximize and be as efficient with water as you can be. All right, let's go. All right, guys, check it out. Look, I've moved most of my potted plants close to these big trees like the multigraph the citrus the banana and i did that for a reason and i'll show you the reason why check it out look this is the reason why i did that we all plant we all know what this is this is a one gallon pot but look most importantly it has holes in the bottom those are drainage holes and this this pot has to have drainage holes because plants need drainage i think a lot of plants would die if they didn't have these holes for water to go through they would rot out so i thought of i thought of something i was like hey whenever i water Whenever I water my potted plants, water just flows right through. 
and it usually just goes into a place that it wasn't helping out anything. And then I realized, hey, I can move it close to these plants and I can get double the water. I can become more efficient with watering because when I water now, the water would flow through and it would water this banana tree. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let's check it out. I got, I got my water going. Here's a little Suriname cherry tree in a one gallon pot. I'm going to water it here. And then in a few seconds, the water is going to drain out from the bottom. See that water coming out from the bottom? That water shouldn't get wasted. And it's not much, it's not much water, it's just a few drops, but it adds up. If you have a lot of potted plants, this will add up. This provides a lot of water to your bigger plants too. All right guys, last tip, check it out. Look, water jugs, 55 gallons of water. These are rainwater barrels. I'm sure most municipalities will give you these for free. You can get these for free. A lot of these municipalities know that we need to capture as much rainwater. The very little rainwater that we get, we need to we need to capture it. So that's what these rain barrels do. Check it out. Come look at this. This is from the last time it rained. I don't even remember the last time it rained, but I still have some of that water. 55, 55 gallons, baby. And I'm still using it. And rainwater, as most folks know, is the plants love rainwater. It's the best. All right. All right, everybody. That was four tips to help you in a drought situation. This is a uh, trying times. This is kind of like scary times with the amount of drought we have. But I think, again, if we work together, we can solve a lot of these problems. We can save water and we can have happier plants, even in crazy drought situations. All right, folks, as usual, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. And I want you to know that what you're doing is important and you matter. Thank you.